what's unique about fertig ataxia i said it's a autosomal recessive disorder so it is a uh, recessive meaning that you have to have repeat expansion from uh, both parents and that is different from huntington's disease which is an autosomal dominant disorder where one repeat expansion is enough to cause the problem but here you have to have repeat expansions in both parents the next question is what is friedrich's ataxia so friedrich ataxia is a genetic disease it's a group of ataxias so it is uh, in ataxias genetic ataxias we have autosomal dominant autosomal recessive friedrich ataxia is an autosomal recessive genetic ataxia and friedrich ataxia belongs to these specific class of genetic disorders that have very unusual and shared patterns um which the not of you know only one of them is ataxia and others are not which are called trinucleotide repeat disorders so a trinucleotide repeat disorder is a genetic condition where there is three nucleotides any of those three and they're different for different so for for friedrich ataxia i believe it's gaa so gaa so guanosine and adenosine adenosine are Uh, are three nucleotides that are repeating so g a g a g a g a now here are some general principles that are common in all trinucleotide repeat disorders the most famous being huntington's disease which is c a g a cytosine adenosine guanine uh, re- repeat disorder but all repeat disorders uh, occurs in genes that normally have repeats at the end of that gene so the gene is a long complex of repeating four nucleotides right and what ends up happening in these genes is that these genes are particular because at the end of the whole long gene introns and exons everything thousands and thousands of base pairs towards the end they have three nucleotide that repeat which are uh, uh, exons meaning that they will be converted to protein intron will be a segment that will not be converted to protein so these are exons last exon that terminates the gene is a trinucleotide repeat which means that three nucleotide convert to one amino acid right whatever that amino acid is i don't know what ga converts into but that uh, amino acid uh, will have then multiple copies depending on how many repeats there were let's say there were 20 repeats there would be 20 amino acid towards the end and what that 20 amino acid which are the same exact amino acid for 20 long length which is unusual inside a gene or inside a protein uh, will create what we call a tail so it forms a long thread that kind of comes out of that protein the so protein wraps up into a complex 4d structure and then has this tail which is the repeat amino acid so that tail serves a purpose and that's you know if you that tail is gone then there's a problem the gene doesn't function well that's how those proteins were designed to have a tail but the problem in trinucleotide repeat disorder is that repeat expansion the tail becomes too long and that impairs the function of the protein the protein gets dragged down because of the tail and is not doing very well now what is the normal repeat length that varies for different proteins uh, it could be uh, as short as 5 or 7 or it could be as long as 50 to 100 repeat long so tail could be very long very short and that varies from gene to gene and is a normal range of expect, accepted repeat and it's not fixed it's not that everybody will have 10 or 12 or 15 it actually varies has a range but usually the range is anywhere from 5 to 30 let's just say and so th- this is kind of the normal numbers of repeat a repeat expansion will be when it becomes more than that so let's say 40 50 60 but repeat expansion can go all the way into thousands for some genes so not everyone here there is a difference that repeat expansion some proteins are so sensitive to repeat expansion that even a mild expansion creates a lot of problem even an expansion from let's say 30 to 40 can create a bad disease that will be the huntington's disease while in other genes the repeat expansion has to be really long to create a bad disease and if it's not really long then it creates a mild disease that is also true for all disorders in repeat expansion that depending on how long is the repeat expansion the disease will present differently or the onset is earlier in age the longer the repeat length so in huntington's disease for example if the repeat expansion is more than 60 then the disease starts before age 18 so called juvenile huntington's disease 
in friedrich ataxia the repeat expansion the repeat is i think anything up to 40 50 45 or 50 is normal and more than that is where the disease starts typically there is a gray zone in between where we're not sure if it's going to happen disease or not and after a certain length which i believe 65 66 is the uh, is considered the clinical cutoff and after that if the expansion is 70 68 69 is is it will very likely to show up as a disease now the longer the repeat the earlier the onset so someone with a 70 or 80 repeat 100 repeat may show disease in their 40s 50s 60s years of age while someone with 200 300 400 may show it earlier and here the repeat expansion goes very long so it's tolerate some of the expansion better than huntington's protein for example this friedrich ataxia protein and here up to 1000 repeats have been reported while in in huntington's only 110 Uh, 100 repeat expansion has been reported maximum some somewhere around that i'm not sure the exact number somewhere around 110 new 12 14 so they they have a couple of other features just to know because that that's an interesting phenomena genetic phenomena uh, repeat expansion disorders have a variable onset age of onset so the, there is a repeat length dependent problem but there is also variable penetrance that with the same repeat length uh, you know so let's say in friedrich ataxia 100 some patients may show disease at age 40 some may show it at 60 some may show a milder disease some may show a moderate disease so there's a variable penetrance there is another interesting phenomena that is seen in all of these repeat expansion disorders called anticipation and anticipation is that in an abnormal gene unstable gene where the repeat has already expanded uh, when it is inherited to the child the repeat expansion may become longer that is being copied over into the child's genome so as those uh, oocytes or gametes are being produced then through shuffling of the chromosome genetic material there may be an repeat expansion and what is called anticipation is called anticipation because a child may then show the disease even before the parent so if I, let's say one of the parent has the repeat expansion but in a mild length a small expansion and they're going to show disease in the late age but now a child suddenly shows a disease and a parent don't know they have the disease because the repeat expansion is, is small enough now the child is a bigger one and they, you know they are showing juvenile early onset of a disease so that's why it's called anticipation the repeat expansion from parent to child in inheritance and then another unique feature is that then most diseases Uh, most genes have a predisposition on anticipation will happen from which biological parent from father or mother so some diseases have anticipation more when they're inherited from father some have it more from mother so if for far from far for huntington's disease definitely father i believe for friedreich ataxia is mother but i'm not sure on that so something to to look up so those are general characteristics of of trinucleotide repeat expansion disorder but what's unique about friedreich ataxia i said it's a autosomal recessive disorder so it is a uh, recessive meaning that you have to have repeat expansion from uh, both parents and that is different from huntington's disease which is an autosomal dominant disorder where one repeat expansion is enough to cause the problem but here you have to have repeat expansions in both parents to to come down to the child to cause the disease it has some unusual features that make it relatively easier to pick up so someone who have a friedreich ataxia depending on the repeat expansion it could be early onset late onset very late onset friedreich ataxia but usually when they have uh, ataxia they have some associated features because that same protein that is causing the ataxia is present in other places the places in the heart so it can cause cardiomyopathy in about a third of patients with friedreich ataxia and it's present in nerves so it can cause neuropathy in a third of patients with friedreich ataxia so neuropathy cardiomyopathy uh, in in patients with ataxia younger age of onset usually 20s will be considered con- very concerning for friedreich ataxia there are some other diseases that look like friedreich ataxia uh, they are called friedreich ataxia like disorders they're also genetic and but by far among the autosomal recessive ataxias friedreich ataxia is the most common cause although there are 20 different autosomal recessive uh, ataxias friedreich ataxia is the most common cause i think almost like 90% of all autosomal recessive ataxias is friedreich ataxia on genetic testing and then autosomal recessive ataxias are by far more common than autosomal dominant ataxias so um, all genetic ataxias about 70% are 
autosomal recessive and 30% are dominant, at least, maybe even more than 70%. And out of those 70%, 90% are Friedrich ataxia. So Friedrich ataxia is actually a pretty common cause of ataxia. Although it's autosomal recessive, it shows that the carriers of Friedrich ataxia, carrier meaning that you have only one, you don't have the others you're not showing, uh, are very common uh, in, in a general population, which means that this tail uh, is just has a predisposition to increase or expand. And then once it's expanded, it doesn't contract. So that's the downside. So if, there, if a disease gene is mild and only show up when you have two copies, that means that it can keep on spreading from generation to generation uh, silently without hurting or damaging their life. So that's why it becomes more common in population and, um, and it's not that aggressive. So that, that is pretty good axiom.